What's up, everybody? It's your boy Marsman here, and I think we have a problem with the skill-based matchmaking. Have you ever noticed that in every FPS game we play, it feels like we're in a constant sweat match? Like, even when you step away from ranked matchmaking, and you just want to play a chill game with some randos to pass the time, you get punched square in the face, expecting to perform to the highest degree, or else you get destroyed? That's what we call the current state of skill-based matchmaking. No matter which game it is, whether it's a first-person shooter like Halo Infinite or COD, to third-person games like Fortnite and Gears of War, we've seen skill-based matchmaking plaguing these games, making them into straight-up saunas with how sweaty it gets. As much as I'd like to say the answer to fixing the problem is to just get good, it's not that simple. Since the beginning of online matchmaking, developers have created their own system of matching players against each other. But in the last decade, it honestly feels like it's just broken down and doesn't work the way it should be. With the public calling out the devs and utilizing these broken systems with no real change in sight, the question is, how can we adjust these systems to meet the demand of the majority of the gaming community? Is it possible to create a perfect balance between social and ranked features? And should we expect the future of the FPS genre to stay this sweaty? Let's get our towels, snort some Cheeto dust, and jump right into this. Ever since online matchmaking has been around, there has been a system put into place to match players to compete in social and ranked matches. Whether the system was more lenient based on social playlists or strict to keep games competitive, they usually follow formulas that basically require you to do math to understand. Now, I don't really like math. Basically, these different formulas are used to calculate which players are matched with each other based on several different criteria almost like analyzing your individual GPA to calculate who would clap you next. These systems have changed over the years, so it's kind of crazy to see how, depending on the game, you might have two completely different matchmaking styles. In the early years, matchmaking was based mainly on server browsers, and this was way more approachable for the average player. Just join up and play. I mean, that's just simple and easy. But when Halo 2 was released alongside the popular use of Xbox Live, we saw a big change to the method of matching against players. Roughly 20 years ago, most systems were based off the variation of the ELO rating system, which was developed for chess. Max Hoberman, who was the head of multiplayer for both Halo 2 and 3, had adapted the system but emphasized the use of the true skill method. This basically not only included a number rank for players as they progressed, but built a system where games would have a variety of ranked level players. So the experiences were always different rather than just being the same old, same old. It's like a change up every time, compared to constantly having to be the ultimate player on your team just to win. True skill basically automatically adjusts every game based on wins, losses, and what the rank of your opponents are in the current match. Instead of just giving you a number, matchmaking is built along a range, and by winning your rating, gets better. And a social playlists were basically untouched with little to zero skill-based matchmaking built in since the priority was to try to create social experiences that felt more laid back in its nature. Then roughly 10 years ago, along with the release of COD Ghosts, we started to see a change other than the dog model. dog model. In games like Rainbow Six Siege, we had constantly felt like we needed to be absolutely play out of our minds in order to win. I could literally see my windows fog up with how intense these games would get. I was always a good gamer, but when playing Halo 5, I started to suck and thought maybe I need to start training. Day after day, game after game, training like I was jumping into esports. Being gifted at Pro Controller was literally my savior. I legit would have to research ways to win and get good just to have fun. What the f happened? Hey, look. I know this seems really, really sudden and just sort of unfair and cruel. But it's non-negotiable. But it's non-negotiable. All of a sudden, every game became a battle of the sweat. And even when you tried to escape the intensity of ranked modes, by joining social playlists, it started to mirror the feeling of ranked. In today's world, most systems are now a combination of the ELO system and true skill, but criteria is added into your calculation. Your MMR or matchmaking rating is calculated based on the career win loss record, location, experience, and skills analyzed per game. There is even evidence that games like Mount Warfare 2019 that when you win a game, systems would make it where you would be placed with a team that's automatically going to destroy you just so you have the feeling of, oh, I need to play one more game to possibly win to end the night. All these systems were built using absolute crackhead math, made me disgusted, and with this new discussion on the skill-based matchmaking in our FPS games, I feel like I need to come up with a solution. And did you know that only 10% of the average viewers are subscribed to the channel? Make sure you hit that thumbs up and subscribe to support the channel. Now back to the video. So what the hell can we do to fix this problem? In its current state, people are debating two Two sides. Option one, to keep the system as is, where games are always competitive using the advanced algorithm that
then make sure the teams are as close as possible. This includes both ranked and social matches. Option two, adjust the system making ranked games more open, keeping matches in a range of levels, but there are also chances of having mixed outcomes. When thinking about the current system as is, I think we need to talk about the good and the bad so we can try to understand why the devs are putting us through this sweat fest. When thinking about the good of how the system works, I think it mainly has to do with the player retention. Generally, when I get into a ranked FPS match, I'm trying to compete and win matches, giving you that dopamine hit like you just dumped on an 8th grader. So when the system tries to make the most balanced match based on MMR, I think the expectation is that they're trying to keep these matches close. It has been proven based on stats from the developers that due to this system that they have in place, players have been seen playing longer and keep coming back for more matches compared to the past. Now this either means one of two things. Either one, the closeness of these matches makes players get that tense feeling that hits them right in the adrenaline Mountain Dew fueled feeling. Or two, they just like punishment. There have been many times where I played games like Halo Infinite and the ranked sessions have had some intense battles where it came to teamwork of the squad to get the win in a tight fashion. Even in times where we were getting blown out at the start of the game, we pulled off an upset by grinding away and just working as a unit. Either way, this system does one thing well, sometimes. It creates a balanced match so that there is always a sense of competitiveness, and as long as you work as a team, it will work out in the long run. At the same time, this system is built so that gamers that may not be as good as some other sweaty chads like me don't get utterly dominated in basic matches. I don't know about you, but I honestly don't feel so great getting absolutely bagged on in a game a basic team slayer or domination. But imagine being a newcomer to a game like Call of Duty or Halo, and all of a sudden you get placed against dudes like Mint Blitz that will utterly destroy any hope of winning the match. This system sort of prevents this from happening for newer players by giving them a set of training wheels before they just straight up throw them under a bus. When thinking about the issues, I need to reflect on the many hours of frustration and straight up anger. Since this system is widespread over most multiplayer based games, I've had multiple different experiences depending on which game I'm playing. But one thing that is consistent is that this algorithm makes every single game mode I play feel way too sweaty. I mean, it's one thing if I just want to stick to ranks and my expectation that fits that is going to be competitive. But when social modes just feel as intense as ranked games, that's just gross. I mean, it's the equivalent of going 15 rounds in a boxing match than you leaving the arena and getting jumped in the street by Rocky Balboa. I can literally remember playing Halo 5 in the first five months of its release, and it was an ultimate grind just to be a top player. I have always been top of the boards in all previous Halo games, but this game made me question my sanity. What shows you the level of sweat that this system does to matchmaking is seen in the fact that skill players have to create smurf accounts just to play more social matches. For those of you who don't know, smurfing or reverse boosting is where gamers create an entirely new account to present themselves as a new member in the game community with a blank slate. This guy's 50. Not according to birth certificate. In other ways, being a high level player forces you to have to wait crazy number of minutes to hours to find games against other top level players. Since this system tries to find the best opponent for you, what happens if you're straight up Chad that can't find an equal? Main Blitz living in Australia and making an infinite level of crazy ass clips has shown to be in a tier of his own. And because of this, he has to literally buy a VPN and pretend he's from the United States just to find a B2B lobby. If a system actually forces you to buy a VPN just to play the game, then that's not really an effective system for gamers. Max Hoberman, I think, said it best. It's basically gamer discrimination. When looking at option two, the ultimate goal is reverting or creating a more lenient algorithm for both social and ranked experiences. What I find the best aspect of the system is that for ranked gameplay, it seems to create a more fair balance between matches where every game you play doesn't always feel the same. For the most part, I never felt the over the top sweaty nature in every game mode but kind of felt like a mix of different experiences. So it wasn't the same each time. I think back to the Halo 2 and Halo 3 eras, where Max Hoberman almost perfected the system entirely. He had mentioned in recent posts that his system for Halo 2 was mainly created to provide room for growth for ranked players. Mainly his mindset, as he mentions, was to create a variable outcomes by creating skill levels within a range of 5 to 10 for this ranked system. What this means is that instead of always having the perfect balance every game, the matches felt diverse, where in some cases your team would dominate, others it would be close, and some you'll lose. This actually shows great retention in ranked game modes, since people didn't feel as tense every game as some of the newer games have you feel. Even when Microsoft had forced true skill for Halo 3, Max had taken the system and made it where the search criteria was more loose in the games it found, 
so it would ease up the balance. With all this math being discussed for ranked, what makes this system best is the social matches never were touched, meaning that most times social game modes were solely meant to be a place just to match up and have fun, with lobby chat enabled, even in some games like Call of Duty where game chat was also allowed. We all remember those COD lobbies back in the day, right? Dude, you and I like a loser more than half your team look at where i'm at i'm above you Ah, uh, the good old days. The old true skill has some flaws for sure, but when making the jump to true skill 2, that's when we saw the massive shift in how games were played. But one of the biggest issues I saw was that if you do loosen the matchmaking for these ranked game modes, it is definitely a tougher road for new players trying to make a jump. Imagine being new on the scene, never being a real FPS fan, and one day you buy COD Modern Warfare 3. Not sure why you would do it. You've never played the game before, so this is your first time. All of a sudden, you get put into a ranked lobby and you get matched with a Bezzy. Ranked one of the best COD players in 2023, multiple championships, MVPs, and you know what's about to happen. Absolutely dunks on you, making you want to never play COD again. Then it happens again and again to where you question your own life choices and just want to go back to bed. Now, even though this is being hyperbolic, the issue with creating a looser matchmaking system in ranked is that for new players, this will be a lot harder to get into the mix since you don't really have training wheels to get you there. More likely, you won't play against a COD legend, but the likelihood of you playing against a veteran that is better than you is more likely in these older systems. I think either option has both positives and negatives, but what do you think we should do? When it comes to my overall opinion on what should happen in our FPS games, I think it revolves around two key aspects. One, is there a balance between social and ranked match making that feels right? And two, do you have the ability to just sit back and play without turning on your sweat mode? I think there should always be a competitive nature to FPS games, since you are fighting to score points and win the match. But I think there should be ways to just turn on the game and have fun without having to constantly be at your very best on the daily. I think I'm more in favor of creating adjustment to the current system we have, mainly because it just doesn't feel as social as it should be. I think when it comes to the rank system, my expectation is that we are about to get sweaty and I need to be ready to roll when playing it. So honestly, I don't I don't mind keeping the balancing more equal in this sense because i don't want to play ranked matches where i have to carry the entire game in order to win especially when you're trying to get to the next tier and you're constantly win one then lose one it just feels like you're staying stagnant by losing the players that you're matched with it feels like more often you'll have teammates that are not on your level and that might hurt the system entirely and at the same time new players will be able to match with people in their own range rather than being placed against veterans that would literally destroy them on the other hand social playlists should be social meaning that i should not be seeing any sense of true skill being near any of these types of game modes because the whole idea is we want to have matches to chill out rather than to constantly feel like we have to be sweating my ass off just to play it. And if you haven't noticed, over the years, games have drifted away from including social features like partying up or keeping the lobby intact. This just hurts the fun aspects of the FPS games we've always enjoyed. Just recently, COD Modern Warfare 3 was experimenting with keeping lobbies in social game modes, which is definitely a great thing to see. Well, why was this even removed in the first place? Back in the day, teaming up with randoms actually was how squads were all started. I used to have a crew of people I would invite to come and play, and it was seen as a social social space rather than just an ultimate competition arena. There are many gamers out there like me that have made a lot of friends by playing video games, and some made lifelong pals by first meeting them on the game space. You know it's bad when there are entire websites and articles made to teach a player how to avoid the skill-based matchmaking of Call of Duty just so they can play against lower tiered players. Go spend money on a Smurf account or go buy a VPN. Like, seriously? We shouldn't have to be doing this just to play in basic social games. In order for FPS games to be saved or at least feel better to play, we need to fix the skill-based matchmaking, or else you better invest in a pro controller, start training, and bring a towel. Do you think we have an issue with our current state of skill-based matchmaking? Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you like game reviews, opinion pieces, and other gaming content, consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. Till next time, this is Marsman signing off. Peace out, guys.